Fly a fair nation. Fly a fair nation. Thank you for tuning in to the Pointless Talks podcast. This episode was powered by Fly a Fair Nation and recorded at the Fan Production House. Last year, this time, um, I had Shadow here with me talking about Valentine's Day stuff and, you know, sex and lube <laughs> and all the sex toys and stuff and some other morbid things. But this year, it's me alone. Um, sorry, I'm kind of slacking on like the episodes. Like I've been doing a whole bunch of shit, so my bad. Sorry, it's a big year. Um. I know you guys have been hearing a lot about Jesse Smollett and everything going on with um, his attack. And then I didn't want to speak on this prematurely because I already know that, like, there's a lot going on around it. Like, even before, <sighs> even before the current, like, speculations about his assault, like, even before that, I was just like, yo, this is going to be something big. I got to read up on this and see what actually happened so I can talk about this accordingly. For those who don't know, Jesse Smollett, big activist, um, gay rights. He's in Empire. He plays a gay person in Empire. If you've never watched Empire, he was a recording artist in the show, whatever, whatever. But he's an amazing, amazing guy. Like He's adorable. Like He's cool. He's gay. He's out. He doesn't really care to talk about his sexuality like that in a whole. But, I mean, well, at one point. Now he's been more comfortable with it and everything. But he... Okay. There was a lot going on online. There was accusation that he was attacked by two men and they hung him and like poured some kind of chemicals on him or whatever. He was hospitalized and all this. After that happened, I was like ready to rush in and be like, oh my God, what the fuck? Hate crimes, blah, blah, blah. They were screaming. Um, apparently they were saying MAGA and like, you know, MAGA related things. So it was a hate crime. Um, it wasn't just a random person that they, they attacked. All of this, you know, whether it's because he's black or because he's gay or both, whichever the case is, I just, I don't like to speak on things if I don't have, like, you know, an actual understanding of, like, what happened. You know, like, I've heard about it, but I was just like, okay, all right, that's fucked up, right? So I left it alone. Then I heard, I think the end of that week or something like that, he went and he performed because he's on stage. Um, He has a performance on stage. I think he's... I don't want to say Broadway, but he's doing live performances. And on stage, he came and he was just like, hey, you know, I had to come out and do this. I didn't want to let you guys down. I'm not going to let that shit stop me. Basically, be like, whatever, I'm here. So there was that. And then now there's a lot going on stating that, you know, the accusations were false or might be false or it might be fabricated. Something to the sort, like, basically saying that he made the shit up. Because there was issues with him turning over his cell phone to the authorities to have them look through it. And on his end, he's stating that he didn't want to turn it over because there's personal information. Like, at this point now, it's been turned over. But they're saying that they can't really say anything about it because there were things deleted. Because they're saying that how he was on the phone with his manager or something like that when he was attacked. Regardless of. I don't care how people feel personally about him or him being gay or him being black or anything else. I hate that there's so much like victim blaming or like speculation when someone comes out and says something happened to them. You get me like with rape victims, it's the same thing. Like, you know, why did you come out so late or oh, what did you do to call this down up on you? Are you sure this wasn't, you know, you just decided you didn't want to have sex with them anymore? Are you sure someone attacked you? Like, if someone's, like, people try to take credibility away from people and the shit that they go through so much that it's, like, almost become kind of like a, like, a thing. Like, especially with, you know, what do they call it? Cancel culture. Like, everything, every time someone does something, or, you know, they dig up someone's past. It's like, oh, time to cancel this person because they were a different person five years ago or they tweeted some crazy shit or whatever the fucking case is. But this man came out, he shared his experience and said, da 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 He could have not said anything. He could have just, you know, gone through whatever he went through, went to the hospital, got healed up and carried on with his life and not said shit. And his experience would have still been that, his experience. Like... Why do you think people need to make up things? Now, I don't know what happened. If it happened, it's fucked up. If it didn't happen, it's fucked up. So I'm not one to sit here and try to speak on what did or didn't happen because I wasn't there. 
They can't find footage of it happening. I'm not going to say it didn't happen because there's no footage because, I mean, a lot of shit happens that you don't have footage of. Just because you didn't see it or someone can't prove to you specifically that it happened doesn't mean it didn't happen. You can't discredit people for especially that shit is traumatizing. That's fucked up. Like, imagine imagine you get attacked by somebody and you tell tell somebody that and they are you that you know what I'm saying? Like, that's that's wild, you know, but I mean, I feel like <laughs> I, I buck up. I mean, if you guys follow me on Instagram, y'all know I ran into um Francis Swaggart, <laughs> Christian show or whatever, Jimmy Swaggart's wife. She probably, <laughs> hmm, she got some interesting things, some interesting views, and I need y'all to go watch her. I'm sending her ratings, but she, 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 she's one of them, boy. She was on her show talking about, you know, how now the schools, they want to change. They want to take away man and wife. They, they don't want you to say they're husband and wife anymore. They want you to say partner. Bitch, so what? <laughs> so what? It's still your partner, right? At the end of the day, whether it's a man or a woman, whether it's same sex or opposite sex, it's still your partner. Your wife, your husband, your boyfriend, your girlfriend is supposed to be your partner. So who gives a fuck if you call them your partner? Like... Child, she had a lot of ignorant fucking thoughts. And I bet you she did not like the fact that we had two men (laughs) breaking history and being male cheerleaders in the fucking Super Bowl because she seemed like one of them real down-home all-American women. Like, you know them all-white might be racist. Let me not talk bad about this all-white lady. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, she, she, oh, boy. I don't know why I stumbled up on her show that night, but I had time and I was petty and I was just like, sis, is you serious? Like, man, sis got videos or books or whatever the fuck it is about basically everything from seven day Adventist to like, she got, she got opinions, boy, she getting paid for them. But touching back on what I just mentioned, um, two male cheerleaders, um, what are their names? Napoleon Ginny's and Quinn, Quentin Perron. Listen, I'm sorry if I butchered y'all names. I'm sorry, but they've made history as the first male cheerleaders to perform at the Super Bowl. Bro, it's 2019. The first male cheerleaders to perform at Super Bowl ever in the history of fucking Super Bowl? Yo, I don't know nothing about football, but I know, <laughs> yo, I didn't watch it because I don't understand football and y'all boycotting that shit, ain't y'all? Like, black people supposed to be boycotting that, but I don't know. Either way, they're cheering for the LA Rams. I didn't even know that that was the... Whatever. Yeah, go them. So, big ups to them. You know, Napoleon Ginny's and Quentin Perron. Perron, I I don't know. I'm sorry, honey. But yeah, shout out to them. Big ups. You know, hopefully, like, you know, I say this all the time, visibility is vital. Imagine you as a young boy wanting to be a cheerleader and you see it in TV shows and you see it in movies and it's always some kind of backlash behind it. But these two men made it to the motherfucking Super Bowl, bitch. Y'all want to do something? Put your mind to it. Don't let nobody talk shit to you and break your dream or break your stride. Like you fucking pursue what the fuck you want to do. Okay. so speaking of that, we're going to talk about. uh, Listen, I'm bruising through. This ain't going to be long. I'm going to be done in a minute. (laughs) Um, I bumped into, well, I shouldn't say I bumped into, because I've been following her for a little bit. Um, there's this lady, um, by the name of Khadija. She's a Jamaican woman, and she has an underwear line called Lucky Skivvies. It's gender-neutral underwear. So, yeah, boys, girls, trans, trans, like, you can wear them. It's by Khadija. It's called Lucky Skivvies. Like, everything is spelled properly, Lucky, S-K-I-V-V-I-E-S. Um, you should check her out. She's on Instagram. Uh, let me see if I, it's the same thing on Instagram. I'm a horrible person. I should have had this ready. Lucky Skivvies. Yeah, Lucky Skivvies. That's the Instagram name. Gender neutral boxer briefs. Okay, underwear for all. Tomboys, androids, femmes, stems, men, women, gender fluid. Designed in New York. Free shipping. All that good stuff. Website is luckyskivvies.com. Check it out. Okay. They have nice, colorful boxer briefs. They all say Lucky Skivvies on them. It's great. Um, yeah, gay Jamaican girl. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> there I go plugging our people. Um, oh, while I'm here, let me say this I should currently be watching motherfucking dating around. I'm hype. I'm hype. I'm sorry. I'm hype. <sighs> Chris Mitchie, okay, unapologetic 876. 
is on a Netflix dating show called Dating Around. It was, I shouldn't say it's a dat- dating show. It's a show about dating, um, blind dates, etc. whatever the case is. It premieres today, Valentine's Day. So it's on there. You can watch all the seasons. Check it out. Check out her YouTube. Check out her Instagram, Diana Michi, Unapologetic876, okay? Hit her up, whatever. She's dope, okay? Um, another person doing big things, Lloydy, motherfucking Lloydy. Okay, like I said, all the shit. If y'all follow me on Instagram, y'all already know all of this. If y'all look at my story, like everything I'm talking about, basically has already been posted, so y'all should know it was coming. Um, I got some soaps made, special requested by moi. Um, from Lloydy, Lloydy Soap Company, all natural. Se- oh, Jesus Christ, I can't talk. All natural secret soaps. So now. Shorty posted her little soaps or whatever, and I was like, okay, this is cute. I want me some soaps or whatever. I was looking at the ingredients and the options that she had. The options that she had, I didn't see what I wanted, right? Because I really, I love oatmeal. Like, oatmeal and honey, like, not even oatmeal and honey, just oatmeal in general. Like, I love oatmeal soaps. I I just like the way it smells because it's, like, a natural fragrance, but at the same time, like, it still has a scent to it, right? You get me? Like, I like, I just love oatmeal, okay, and it's textured and all that good stuff, it's great. I personally don't have any skin problems, knock on wood, you know what I'm saying, I don't have any skin issues that I'm aware of anyways, so I don't necessarily buy natural soaps to prevent or to help with anything, it's just I like the way it feels, I just like it. I don't really like body wash, I mean I have shit ton of body wash, and certain kind of soaps I don't really like because... I like to feel literally squeaky clean when I'm done showering. I don't want to feel moisturized. (laughs) I want my skin to be dry. Like, I want all the dirt and grease and whatever else, if I use body oil or whatever, to be washed off of me. And I am clean and ready to start anew when I get out of the shower. Like, I'm that person. Like, I literally will shower and hear my skin go squeak, squeak, and I am happy. Like, that's, (laughs) that's the type of person I am, right? So I like soaps that don't leave me feeling like greasy. Like y'all, some of y'all, they make the soaps that like blah, 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 that way on purpose, and they do it so that you feel moisturized, so you don't gotta go crazy and put on a whole bunch of lotion afterwards. Like I don't, I'm not here for that. I'm here to take a shower. <laughs> I'm not here to shower and moisturize at the same time. So that's probably why I like n- more natural soaps also. But I was like looking at the, like I said, I was looking at the um, options, and I was like, damn, she don't got an oatmeal one. Shit, I wonder if she'll make it. Because I saw her ingredients that she did have oatmeal and she did have honey. So I was like, yo, I wonder if she can just do that alone. Because she had like mango and pineapple, coconut. She got like mad shit, right? And like aloe vera, lavender. Like she got all the shits, right? So I hit her up and I was like, yo, can you make me this? And she was like, yeah, 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 I got you. Now, before y'all get excited and think y'all want to just throw fucking options at her, I don't know if this is for everybody or if it's just because she already had these <laughs> options like in her ingredients, but I did make the request and she did make the soaps like within a week, the soaps were made and ready uh, and you know, I had to get my coins together so I can pay her. They're reasonably priced considering they are homemade, handmade, all natural, okay? Y'all need to realize what the fuck y'all are paying for when y'all pay for these shits. Y'all go to Bath and Body Works and buy them little soaps that's bad for your pum pum. And y'all pay $16 or $10 or however much dollars y'all pay for these little soaps that don't do nothing good for your skin. But y'all hear about a young black girl or black people in general doing something that's actually going to help you out. And y'all be like, mm, y'all be taxed. No, it's, I would tell you if it was a little pricey. I would dead ass tell you. But even if it was, bitch, buy it. Like, why not? It's good for you. So, contrary to the fact that I don't have any skin issues, these soaps are said to clear up, like, uneven skin tones and, like, you know, help with blemishes and all that shit. So, look into the ones that she has. See what's good with whatever she ta- she responds. You can hit her up on Lloydie's Soap Company. That's the Instagram. Everything is spelled properly. It's Lloyd with a Y at the end. Soap Company. Like, Lloydie's Soap Company. Okay? So, you can hit her up. Contact her. Let her know Pointless Talk sent you. <laughs> let her know Pointless sent you. She'll be like, oh, my God, I love her. But... <laughs> She she's mad cool. She's dope, 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 dope. Um, U.S. shipping. I don't know if she does international, but like I said, ask her. So there's that. Um, but yeah, I got the soaps. 
they smell great they feel great like it's i don't have no issues with it so i'm fucking happy when these shits done or almost done i'm gonna buy more because i have no problem supporting people right so on the subject of healthcare and all this fun stuff um tying back into like super bowl and commercialism and all that there's a gillette commercial that got people pit well sorry not people men pissed i don't know if y'all saw this but the shit had me dying okay the commercial well the commercial didn't have me dying necessarily it was more so the message behind it and the way people reacted that had me dying first of all it's basically saying men need to take ownership what's wrong with that like take ownership that's really all it is like I don't see what the problem was with that. And people are up in arms. Like, niggas is up <laughs> the fuck in arms about it. And I just think that's hilarious because everything that's been going on in society, right? The Me Too movement, you know, everything. Every single thing that's going on. And you see people that still do victim blaming and still do, like, they say dumb shit. Like, do dumb shit. And think that it's okay because it's been quote unquote okay for so long. And they have a problem with people coming out and saying it's not okay now. So now they feel uncomfortable or like people are being pussies or like people like it just shows you how much is wrong with society. And the biggest thing that I always say, like women are the least protected people in the world, black women specifically. But this commercial is telling men to take ownership, and people are upset about that. Like, can you can you honestly believe that? Like, can you honestly – how can you rationalize that? You know what I'm saying? So I just wanted to shed some light on that. Um, I don't know what else I got to talk about. I think that was everything. I covered everything on my docket. I hope everyone had a wonderful – February, I don't really care so much about Black History Month because I feel like every day is a representation of our roots and who we are. I don't think you need to wait for February to be all pro-black or none of that shit. Don't wait for February to buy black. Don't wait for February to celebrate black people or look up black history or anything like that because we're fucking black every single day of the year. Like, the police don't give a fuck about nothing about us in February. So why should we only give a fuck about us in February? Like you still black every day of the week. So just live and own in that shit. Um, if you have any poetry and short stories, anything you want to share, have read on the show, please feel free to submit it to askpointless at gmail.com. Also, don't forget to listen, like, share, subscribe to the Pointless Talks podcast. We're available on all the platforms. <laughs> um, tune in, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Google Play Music, Spotify, you can find us, follow us, listen, interact (laughs) on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. Everything is Pointless Talks, P-O-I-N-T-L-E-S-S-S-T-A-L-K-S. If you like us, rate us, give us five stars, keeping a bad mind feelings them to on a self. And whether you got here on purpose or by fate, thank you again for tuning in to the Pointless Talks podcast. (laughs)